Hi, I'm Dr. Bear, and I want to show you how to model a quantum harmonic oscillator in MATLAB. Probably break it up into a couple of sessions. So the first one we'll look at the statics, and then time dynamics will be covered in the next one. So to start off, we'll discuss a little theory here. In this plot, I'm showing you the parabolic potential for a quantum harmonic oscillator. That's that parabolic curve there. And here's the Hamiltonian. The kinetic energy part is here, and the potential energy part here. This P is the momentum operator, and then this Q is the position operator. Sometimes you'll see the position operator as an X. M is the oscillator mass, and then omega is the oscillator's angular frequency. And then this A dagger and then A are the raising and lowering operators, respectively. The time independent Schrodinger equation is given here, where these n's are the eigenfunctions of the quantum harmonic oscillators, and these E sub n's are the eigenenergies they're evenly spaced with spacing h bar omega. And these creation and annihilation operators transition the system between adjacent eigenstates. So you can see the plot here. At each allowed energy level, we plot the probability distribution in space for the nth eigenstate. So the ground state is n equals 0, first excited state is n equals 1, so on. And as I mentioned, the lowering operator transforms the nth eigenstate into the n minus 1 eigenstate, and the raising operator takes the n eigenstate and transforms it into the n plus 1 eigenstate. The eigenstates of the Hamiltonian provide a very nice system for modeling the quantum harmonic oscillator. When we use this basis for representing our system and doing algebra in that basis, we call this Fox space. So here's a general state that's written as a superposition of these eigenstates. And now if we use this set of elementary vectors to represent the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, we can write the arbitrary state like this. And next we would like to write the annihilation operator in a Fox space representation. We'll use two facts to do that. First, we have the action of the lowering operator on a state. And second, we realize that if this state is represented using an elementary vector, then this picks out a single column of the A tilde matrix representation for the lowering operator in the energy basis. So for example, a acting on ket zero gets you scalar zero, which you can write as all zeros in a vector. A acting on one gets you ket zero, so we write it like this. A acting on two gets you square root of two, ket one, here's that. So these are the columns of this A tilde matrix. So we just put those together, and so we say that the lowering operator is represented by the A tilde matrix in the energy basis. We can simply take the conjugate and transpose of this A tilde matrix to get A tilde dagger, which is the representation of the raising operator in the energy basis. And the raising and lowering operators give us a nice way to write the Hamiltonian also in the energy basis. So the Hamiltonian will be represented by H tilde, and we just take the other matrices that we formed and add one half times the identity matrix and then multiply by H bar omega. And this is what you'd should see here. Notice that this is diagonal because we're working in a basis where the eigenvectors of this Hamiltonian provide the basis vectors. You can also write the position and momentum operators in terms of the raising and lowering operators. Now let's do some MATLAB representation and visualization here. So here's my MATLAB and I'm just going to bring up a new script. We'll dock it and we'll just start off by defining some parameters. N will be the number of basis states. Let's start off with something easy. And now we can immediately begin with some calculations. We'll start by constructing the matrix representation of the lowering operator. Let's just remind ourselves of the form of that. Here it is. In the super diagonal, we will put this 1 square root of 2 square root of 3. So let's do that here. I'm using the diag command. It didn't like that. It's because I need to make this a colon. And here's exactly what we wanted. 1 square root of 2 square root of 3 square root of 4, so on. Now to make the raising operator. In MATLAB, this apostrophe is the conjugate and transpose. Next, we can create the Hamiltonian. So this creates an identity matrix of dimension n, and the Hamiltonian is actually proportional to this, but I want to run this for you first so you can see what results when we calculate this h. And you see we get the half, one and a half, five halves, seven halves, so on. Let's also unsuppress this a dagger just to make sure that that's correct. Uh, and that looks good. 
It's the conjugate transpose of A. Now we need to put in some constants. First we need h bar. Also, let's put in parameters to get us the frequency. I'll use f in inverse centimeters. These units are relevant to some work that I do in molecular physics. And this is really just f equals c over lambda, but c is taken to be unity. That's how you get inverse centimeters. To get a frequency in hertz out of this, we take the inverse centimeter frequency and we multiply by the speed of light in centimeters per second. Because recall that this c is unity, so we're going to multiply it by centimeters per second. And then to make an angular frequency, we just multiply by 2 pi. Okay, now we can calculate our Hamiltonian, and we multiply all of this by h bar omega. We just run this, double check, things work, and no, they don't work. Okay, the problem here is that I'm missing a multiplication operator there. Okay, that seems to run. Continuing on, it will be helpful for us to look at states in position space, so let's define a position operator. And let's just remind ourselves of the formula for that. Here's the position operator. And now let's start to visualize eigenstates of the Hamiltonian in both energy basis and a site basis. We'll start off with an energy basis visualization. And so in the calculations, we're going to use little n to select an energy eigenstate. Let's start off with 0 for the ground state. And then we'll just construct a vector here. It's a column vector. At this point, all zeros. But we're going to put in a 1 for the n plus 1 position here. So to visualize, we'll use the bar 3h for horizontal bars. We'll put in a probability distribution. We note that this is an energy, so that's what the underscore e is. Let's define this really quick. So it's going to be this vector. First, we'll take the complex conjugate of it, and then we'll multiply element-wise by that same vector. So there's our probability distribution. Turn on the grid. Let's just run that to see if that works. Maybe we need to define an m. I forgot to do that, so let's do that here. We'll add a parameter, m, and I will use a mass in atomic units. Let's say 6 for now. And we're going to need to do some conversions. We'll need to convert AMU to electron volts. And as I recall, it's about 931.5, maybe 6, 5, let's say 5 for now. And that's mega electron volts, but I have the factor of a million there. So we'll just make that electron volts. And of course, this really comes from Einstein's famous equation. So a mass doesn't actually convert directly to an energy. A mass converts to an energy divided by the speed of light squared. So I'm actually going to want to use a different speed of light. We're going to use it in nanometers. And so the conversion goes like this. We'll take m, and it's the amu mass converted to energy. And we divide by the speed of light squared. And the units here are, OK, so there's our mass. Now let's try this again. OK, everything seems to run. And there's a bar 3. Let's close that. I wanted a bar h. Running that again. OK, so what are we looking at here? On the x-axis is probability. And on the y-axis is the n, the index of the eigenstate. So because I chose n equal to 0, here I've specified the ground state. If I put in here n equals 1, then now I have full probability of the first excited state being occupied. OK, now, though, we want to know what this looks like in position space. So we're going to need a change of basis operator. To do this, we take the eigenvectors of the position operator. And I suppose it'll be helpful if I put in here, this is the position operator. Of course, this is the Hamiltonian. OK, so a few other notes here. We should note that these operators are in the energy basis. Now we form this UQE. This is a transformation matrix from energy basis to position basis. And to describe how that works, let's just write here. OK, now that we have that transformation operator, let's look at states in the site basis. So that's how I'm going to denote that this is a site basis state. And in fact, I'm going to change this to denote that it's an energy basis state, or that it's in the energy basis. And in fact, I'm also going to change this to x, just to be consistent here x for position. OK, let's create a probability distribution. And now let's plot it. OK, it doesn't like that. I think I saw that. Oh, yes, I need to turn that, in, that little x into a capital X. Let's try this again. OK, 
Uh, let's put in zero for the ground state just to make sure we see what's going on here. Okay, so the ground state is fully occupied in energy basis and then in position basis or site basis we have this distribution. Uh, let's make it a little bit better, a little easier to understand. Let's, we need to put in some axes labels here. So for the first plot, the Y label should be N. Okay, so that makes that nicer. Let's add the labels to the second plot. Oh, and I forget the X label here for the first plot should be probability. Okay, very nice. Next plot. So here the X label is going to be position, the Y label is probability. Now looking at this plot, I didn't really specify X coordinates, but we can. If we actually take the eigenvalues given here, those are the X coordinates that are reported here. So we'll take the diag. So we're here we're extracting the diagonal from this matrix running here. These actually are in nanometers. So I'll close this. X label is position, so let's give it capital X nanometers. Okay, so docking this, we are looking now at the ground state in energy space and then the probability distribution in space. We can look at this in a little bit more detail. So instead of n equals 7, let's make n equals 71. Let's run that. What if little n is not 0 for the ground state, but 1 for the first excited state? Two peaks, one node right in the center. n equals 2. Three peaks, two nodes, so on. Okay, so we have just visualized here the stationary states of the quantum harmonic oscillator. In the next video, we'll look at time dynamics for the quantum harmonic oscillator. Remember to like the video if you found it informative and helpful, and please subscribe to the channel.